how's everyone this morning? No, great. How's everyone this morning? Good, great. All right. So I was contacted to talk, and I was told very strictly it's 10 minutes. And I said, that's fine. 10 minutes for me is halftime. All right. So we're going to talk about uh, kind of some halftime adjustments, but hopefully a little bit more than that. So I thought about how many halftimes have I spoken at? I've coached at Stanford for 25 odd years, but other teams also. So this TED halftime is my 1,162 halftime talk. All right, so we'll see how it goes because obviously we want to go out and win the second half, which the first half was warm up. Um, halftime is uh, really a key time for a basketball coach. This is the time that you really earn your pay. You make adjustments. You make changes. You see what's working. You see what's not working. And you have to share information with your team at halftime, and you have to inspire at halftime. So as soon as the first half horn goes off, our team runs in the tunnel, and then I follow them. And what I'd like to do is uh, bring you into our halftime. When I watch games, I'm always wondering, what is that coach saying at halftime? You know, and other people come up to me and say, Tara, what did you tell your team at halftime? They came back out and played so well in the second half, uh, most times. Um, <laughs> you know, but um, we are winning the halftime of the national championship game last year. We should have left at halftime. Uh, but either way, uh, the, the, the message is important, but it's probably more just the communication and the connection with your team. Uh, that they really get what you're saying and they, they really believe what you're saying. For us, when we go into a basketball game, a lot of people think, you know, you just show up for the game and you play the game. Uh, for me, I watch at least every game that the team has played, probably our opponent, three or four times. I've watched all of our games. So going into a game, um, I've watched probably 10 or 20 uh, DVDs of the team that we're going to be watching. Our team has a five to seven page scouting report on the team. We've walked through the information. We have played it live. We have uh, watched a 20 minute video of what we're going to play against. We go over 45 minutes before the game, a 15 minutes on the whiteboard, what, what we should expect. But at halftime, things still are not always going as planned. So you have to have a, a you know, you have to have a plan to make some changes and ways to adjust, and you have to think quickly. The ability of great coaches or great players to slow the game down, to see in real time what's happening and make those changes, I think is really the difference. And uh, what helps me is watching a lot of videotape. I watch over and over so that when things happen, I recognize them. I've seen them before. Um, and I started watching videotape as a young girl. Actually, I grew up in upstate New York. I watched with my dad when I was 10 years old. We we're watching video. We we're watching the Boston Celtics with Red Auerbach, a legendary coach. And I'm charting things as a 10-year-old. I have no idea why I'm doing this. I just loved it. All right. As a third grader, I did the three-player weave in gym class. And I'm like crazy about basketball. So now I'm playing basketball. But girls didn't play basketball. There's no girls on television. There's no women's teams. There's no scholarships. Basketball did not exist the way it does now back then when I was growing up. But I was just determined and maybe just a little stubborn. I just played anyway. And I would go, and there were the boys were playing uh, you know, in the driveway. And I'd want to play. And they'd say, we don't want the girl to play. So I brought the best basketball. If they wanted to play with my ball, I played. So there I was getting into games. But you know, as they got older, they had, uh, they had freshman teams and JV teams and varsity teams. And we didn't have any teams. So I would watch. Uh, I, never, I, I watched and I studied and in fact I tried out for cheerleading. I was so desperate to go watch them play that I would try it out for cheerleading to go to the games. Um, needless to say, as a young girl, my parents were alarmed when the librarian called my house and called my dad and said, uh, Mr. Vanderveer, Tara has read every book in the library on basketball. So I was just hooked. I was crazy about it. And so I, I just feel like, you know, when I go into halftime, I feel like I'm ready. You know, I, I grew up playing on my own. I would go out and play, you know, by myself. My parents would say, Tara, come in and do your algebra homework. Basketball is not going to take you anywhere. Like, I knew algebra was not taking me anywhere. But, uh, you know, I just studied the game. I watched the game. I was intrigued by the game and the strategy of it. So now, 
you know, it was my job to communicate, it's my job to communicate with our team. And there's also, there's this sense that I have with our team. Appreciate being in this locker room, appreciate going out and playing in front of 20,000 people and being on television and all the wonderful things that go with intercollegiate athletics. And when I tell the story to, like, there'll be a room of 50 10-year-olds at our basketball camp. And there's a young woman that came to our basketball camp, Anna came to our camp. Um, and I say to the girls, I say, you know, I didn't play. I didn't play on a team. There weren't scholarships. And there's this one little 10-year-old. She'll raise her hand and she'll say, why not? And I'll be like, ooh. And I'll say, well, you know, like any teacher, well, can anyone else answer this question? <laughs> and so then another little girl raises her hand. She goes like this sexism. I'm like 10 years old. I'm like, wow. So, so I want to bring you into the locker room. And in our locker room, I go in the locker room and our team is very focused. The locker room is, is so intense. I mean, forget about women not being competitive. Someone said that today. I'm like, forget that. Our women are so competitive. They are so driven. They know, they know the scouting report. They are listening. They are hanging on the things that I'm saying. So I better come up with something good for them. And so the first thing I start with is our number one goal as a team is to be aggressive. Again, I'm like that might fly in the face of, you know, we have to be aggressive. We have to put our will on the other team. And being aggressive does not mean fouling, does not mean being dirty. That means just coming out and saying, this is what we're going to do. Deal with it. And we come out as a team, we're aggressive offensively, we're pushing the ball, we're running, uh, we're aggressive defensively, getting our hands on the ball. And I talk to our team, are we aggressive? In our first game, we did not have one single foul at halftime. That is not showing being aggressive. You're allowed five. I said, at least use three. So uh, being aggressive. Then I go through specifics with our team. And I, uh, I'll ask our, at this point, an assistant coach will have a stat sheet. And I'll say, all right, now, how many offensive boards do we have? And they'll say three. I'm like, we, we can get three doing nothing. If you want to watch, be a spectator, sit with me, buy a ticket. Otherwise, get on the glass. And I'll talk to specific players. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. And go through playing offense, playing defense. And again, I think that halftime is, a lot of it is, you know, pe people think that coaches are in that at halftime ranting and raving. Well, every once in a while, I'll get really upset with someone. And they'll say, well, Tara, your vein is popping out, you know? I mean, because there's a lot on the line. We have worked very hard for this game, all right? And again, um, we're, we're coming out. We're, we have spent a lot of time getting ready, and we want to do very well. So, but most of halftime is, in my mind, reminding. I'm reminding our team. Wh who are we? And answering the question, who are we? Are we champions? You know, if we are champions, this is how we play. If you watch a lot of teams play, players will come out of the game. They will throw down their uniform. They'll kick the chair. And I said, we don't have any of that. It's how we behave. It's how we compete. And I remind our team as champions, we are not playing against the opponent. We are playing against ourselves to be the best that we can be. It's not about what the other team does because we will beat teams sometimes by 20, 30, or 40 points. Or we might be beaten by 10, 20, or 30, 40 points. I hope that doesn't happen because I'll be unemployed. But, uh, you know, the thing about it is, with us, it's competing and doing the best you can do. And our team, when I talk to our team, I actually asked them yesterday at practice. I said, why do you play basketball? What is it that you love about playing basketball? And some of them said, I love the discipline of it. And we have a, a, an express, we do a thought for the day. And one of the thoughts for the day is the pain of discipline is far less than the pain of regret. You know, and our team comes out and practices extremely hard. And they, they make sacrifices. They spend a close to, you know, three or four hours a day uh, playing basketball. Why do they do it? Well, they love the, uh, the energy of it. They love being in uh, a room with you know, 14 other women and trying to be the best they can at a sport that they really enjoy. And they played this sport for a very long time. They love the sisterhood. And in fact, this year on a team, I have two sisters. And it's really interesting to watch how they help each other, how they support each other, how encouraging they are. And this, you know, real blood sisterhood of uh, two sisters has really it kind of spread through the team. It's really contagious in that other people are 
better sisters to each other because of the real sisters on our team. They love the camaraderie. They love the, uh, the physical play, the getting exhausted, the putting yourself on the line and doing the absolute, absolute best you can. Checking right here. I'm done. All right. But one thing I just want to say is that with basketball, the one thing we always go out, we give ourselves a cheer. I want to see a little rally real quick. Clapping your hands together real quick. Rally, 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 rally. And on three, say together. One, two, three. Together. Thank you. Thank you so much. Love that woman. Please welcome to the stage our next